Hey everyone, I'm Hashem. Welcome back to Pushing Film. Godox recently released these two new camera flashes, each of them being marketed as a retro camera flash. And I think it's a pretty big deal because it's rare for a bigger company to release products aimed at film photographers, which these are at least in some part. So when they emailed me asking me if I wanted to review these flashes, at the time I hadn't heard of them, I had no idea. So I clicked the link in their email to watch the video campaign for these flashes. So I was quite surprised to see such a well-produced video for what I thought would be a really niche product, especially for the Lux Senior, which is arguably the more retro looking one of the two. Complete with professional actors portraying film shooting hipsters, which made me wonder if they were kind of poking fun in some way. With one gifting the other, a Lux Senior, a perfectly matching silver Nikon FE being used with the flash in variously idealistic and utopian slow motion scenes, and even shot and edited with a whole vintage aesthetic. The video for the Lux Junior was even more corny, with one particular scene where the actors are pretending to review the images on the back of a camera, except that it's a Canon FTB film camera. So anyway, ad campaigns aside, my thoughts were, yes, absolutely, I will review these flashes. At the time, I thought it was quite exciting that something like this would even happen, that companies would release something aimed at film shooters. And I really wanted to know if they were all style and no substance and share that information with you. So Godox sent me one of each model for making this review just to be transparent, but I wasn't paid for making the video. So I'm gonna be honest with you with what I think. So first things first, let's talk about the packaging, build quality and style of these two flashes. They both come packaged quite nicely with some great inclusions, including the carry pouches, PC sync cables and charging cable for the Lux Senior. And the first thing that quite impressed me was that the build quality is actually quite nice on both of these. So it's good to see that they didn't cheap out on the build quality for these flashes. The Junior has a nice, somewhat retro form factor, ergonomic controls, especially the big main control dial at the back. The Senior is larger, but not overly large, especially when folded down. Similar controls on the Senior, including the dial, but with the huge difference of having that folding design with the pop-out flash bulb and then the reflector dish which fans out as such. So pretty quick and easy to unpack and deploy the Lux Senior. So it's clearly similar in design or inspired by these really old style flashes which required a new bulb every time you fired it. The Junior runs on AAA batteries, seems to have a slightly longer recycle time in my testing than the Senior which has its own built-in battery which is chargeable by USB-C and they're both non-TTL flash units meaning they have that nice wide compatibility with a huge range of cameras but because of that they won't read data from the lens or camera and must be used manually for each shot or with the auto mode but if you're planning to use these with a film camera that's kind of the norm especially with the older models both of them have a sync port with the cable included which is great for using it with older cameras that don't have a hot shoe for example so as mentioned they both have that same type of uh, flash power output dial which i'll talk more about soon and they both have a little control to switch to a couple of different slave modes, which make these useful if you're gonna use them as a slave flash to another strobe, for example. I tested both of these flashes with both film and digital cameras. And I have to say, they actually both worked quite well and reliably. When using them manually, the dials on the back makes it quite easy to figure out the flash power required for each scene. So you start with your chosen ISO and intended shooting distance. You match those two figures up on the dial and then it will tell you which flash power would be required for each f-stop. So for example, at ISO 400 with the subject, let's say two meters away. So if I was taking a portrait of someone two meters away on ISO 400 film, or that set to my digital camera, the flash would then tell me the power to use for each f-stop. So in the case of the junior, that means at f11, I'll be using full power, at f8, half power, at f5.6, a quarter power, and so forth. And as mentioned, there is an auto mode, which means that you can set the flash to auto and it should do a lot of the work for you. What you need to do, however, is set the ISO and f-stop to the foundational setting for the flash, which is the same on both. And that's ISO 100 f2.8. You can also extrapolate that to ISO 200 at f4, ISO 400 at 5.6, and so on and so forth again. That gives you some versatility there. So for example, using ISO 400 film, you leave the f-stop on 5.6, put the flash on auto and it will sort of read the distance of the subject for you and set the flash power accordingly. So it's one less thing to think about and it lets you shoot in dynamic situation where your subject distance might be changing from shot to shot and that's quite useful. 
When it comes to the output, I want to break that down into two aspects. One is how the flash exposes and the second is the look of the flash. And what I found in this regards is that the Lux Senior seems to underexpose a little bit in comparison to the Lux Junior. And I found that both in auto modes and in manual. And I wasn't sure if it was just my particular copies of these flashes or something inherent to the design difference between the two, which I really think is a big part of it, given that one has that reflector dish style, which is very unconventional. But either way, when looking at them in comparison to each other, I generally found that the Junior gave a brighter and more even illumination. And that brings me to the look that each of these flash outputs creates in the images that you take. It's clearly quite different. So with the Lux Junior, you get a more traditional, even spread of high contrast light with hard shadows, as you would get with most on-camera or even off-camera flashes. With the Lux Senior, however, you get kind of a spotlight effect with a noticeably softer light. Because of that reflector dish, you get a very center-weighted hotspot of brightness from the flash, which falls off quite quickly towards the corners. So this is more noticeable at wider focal lengths, but even at 35 mil, it's quite noticeable with the heavy vignetting created by the output of the Lux Senior. So in these comparisons of the same shot taken on each flash, you can see that it starts to reduce when you uh, go down to a 50 mil focal length, but even then it's still quite noticeable with that vignetting around the corners. And then by the time you get to about a 100 mil focal length, it starts to disappear with the evenness of illumination becoming uh, pretty comparable between the two, but then you can also notice another aspect which is the color temperature of each. The Lux Junior seems to give a slightly warmer temperature and if you notice in any of these product shots, it has a bit of a, a warm sort of uh, frosting on the front of the flash, whereas the Senior with its silvery reflector dish seems to give a cooler color temperature which is stated to be about 6000 Kelvin and you will notice it in the highlights in these test shots, for example, on the white parts of the color chart, there is a difference in that color temperature. So it's not just the size and design between these two flashes that is the glaring difference, but it's actually the output. So the Senior with that old school reflector dish is taking what would be a smaller light source and turning it into a bigger one, which is traditionally why you'd be using something like a softbox. So what happens when you take a small light source, turn it into a bigger one, is that the light becomes softer in quality. It'll be more scattered, and then also because of the shape of this dish and the way that it throws light out, it has that spotlighting effect as well. Now, because of the completely dark background between these two shots, you might not notice the fall off as much, but even despite that, you can start to see the light falling off at the bottom of the frame on his clothing on the shot taken with the Lux Senior by comparison. So that same night, Josh and I walked around the streets doing some practical tests and I shot on my Leica MA film camera. And in that particular situation, I quite liked the Lux Junior, especially because of its compact size and the way I tend to shoot on the street, that fast paced stuff where I kind of uh, just want to get those snapshots and uh, want that more even illumination and spread. I'm not too fussed about the contrast or getting softer shadows or a more flattering light for something like a portrait. I personally preferred the, the Lux Junior in practical usage out on the street, but this might vary for you. But I also did some tests with the Lux Senior on the street, on film, and everything worked fine. None of the shots uh, didn't sync, for example. The automatic mode worked well. The manual calculations worked pretty well. Again, slightly on the darker side, but I think that is just inherent to that Lux Senior flash with that heavy fall off, you're gonna get a darker looking image in general. So you can compensate a little bit to make up for that. Josh also tried the Lux Senior on his digital Leica M10. And you can see in these examples that it had that same pattern of the center weighted brightness or hotspot with the heavy fall off towards the corners and the slightly darker look with softer shadows. So one of the good things I guess is that you don't get that obvious flash look when using the Lux Senior because of the softer light quality and that kind of spotlighting effects with the fall off which might be good if you want to use that to some kind of creative advantage. And one practical aspect of the Lux Junior in specific combination with a Leica M rangefinder is that the way that the Leica M hot shoes are designed is that third party flashes especially tend to sit quite far backwards. It made it so that I couldn't get my eye as close to the uh, viewfinder as I normally would with uh, other third party flashes that don't have that protruding rear dial. So when using something like the Lightpix Lab Flash Q, for example, even though it does protrude a little bit further back, it doesn't block me from being able to get my eye right up to the viewfinder. So I just thought I would mention that in case there were any Leica M users out there, because it was a little bit of a deal breaker for me, but it is something that I was still able to work around during my testing. So in my opinion for the price, around 100 for the little one, almost 200 for the larger one, they're not bad. 
And if you're gonna get good usage out of them, I can see the value for money. They're built quite well, they look cool, they have those ergonomic controls and they should ideally last you a long time. And I think it's pretty cool to have something like these two flashes available for these older film cameras because there's not much out there otherwise that has those manual controls, wide range of compatibility, the reliability of something that's brand new with a warranty and the battery convenience of the uh, rechargeable, especially in the Luxenia and the AAAs, which are pretty easily accessible these days. And I would highly recommend using rechargeable batteries. I personally found the Eneloops to work quite well for me in all my flash applications, both digital and film. So I think in conclusion that this is a great move by Godox, recognizing film photographers and putting products out there with them in mind, and also with people who just like that retro aesthetic in general. And tying back to my initial curiosity about these two flashes, is it a gimmick to be releasing something along these lines with the type of advertising they're putting into it? Well, maybe to some degree, and you could say that about a lot of things, but all in all, I think there's more good than gimmick in this case. And I think it's far outweighed by the fact that they're doing something unique and different and something that other companies haven't done. Most of all, it's recognizing the film shooting community, making more products like this available, and hopefully it'll allow for other companies to follow that example and for them to continue making products like this assuming the success of these two flashes. So would I recommend them? Absolutely, if you think you're gonna get use out of them and can justify the price, there's not many other options out there, especially with that wide range of compatibility and the auto mode. There are things like the LightPix Labs that I mentioned earlier, but that doesn't have an auto mode. It's not as intuitive to use. And it's great that the Godox company has created both the junior and the senior to provide two distinctly different options for different types of shooters or applications. Another option, of course, would be to try and hunt for these old flashes that came out around the time of these film cameras, but they're not generally going to be as easy to find as getting something brand new with a warranty and they often have corroded terminals or they just don't work anymore and um, sometimes not as easy to use depending on the flash you get. They might have some advantages like the ability to to bounce them like this one and they kind of might match the camera that you're using it with. But once again, it's just great to have the option out there. I think Godox has done something great. So I hope this review was helpful and that it uh, gave you a bit of an idea of the difference between the Godox Lux Senior and the Lux Junior in case you're in the market for one of them. I wanna thank Godox for sending me a copy of each of these flashes for review. I quite enjoyed testing them out. And I hope if you get one of these two flashes that you found this video helpful, you enjoy using them, you get some better shots than I did, hopefully, which wouldn't be hard to do. Thanks for watching this review and I'll see you on the next Pushing Film video.